Oh. Let's start sharing, guys, the, the, the syllabus. Have you seen the syllabus? Everyone has the syllabus? Yeah. Excellent. OK, so the, the syllabus is basically, we're going to see the finance from a CFO perspective. OK, so and I will explain what is the meaning of that. In terms of um, grading, so we have class participation is going to be 25 percent. So be active in the class. Uh, the Zoom class is not going to count a lot. It's very tricky to see you, but during the regular classes, I will see you and try to participate and try to do uh, all the assignments that, that I will provide you in, in class and outside of the class. We have three exams. So, um, I, I gave you the, the dates already. So please study, and this is 75% of the grade. So we have 100% of the grade, and um, the course outline is presented in, in this table. Okay, so I will not go into the, um, into the details, but these are the, the exam days, guys. So June 6th is going to be the, the first exam, the 20th and the 29th, okay? Any questions, guys? And they are, when, if I tell you they are not cumulative, guys, I, I would be lying, you know? They are not cumulative in the sense of the material, imagine in the second exam, does not ask explicitly about the material in the first exam. However, the basics of what we learn for exam one is going to be the support for the for exam two. Okay? You're gonna see everything is building up. We build up from, from zero. At the end of the, of the class, guys, class three or exam three basically collects the information that you should have learned from one and two, but it's, it's a smooth transition. It's gonna be a very smooth transition for you. Uh, do you have any questions about the grading, the content? We can, we can discuss a little about this stuff. No? No questions? Okay. So what I what I need to to, to know first, guys, is is uh, let me see if I how this is. Uh, okay. Yeah, give me one second, guys. I need to. Why I don't see you? That's what I'm I'm trying to see. Oh yeah, here we go. So guys, what I want to, to know is, let's do a very brief introduction because the real one is going to be done the, day, the first day we meet, but just briefly, tell me some, if you have some experience, first of all, what do you have to study economics, finance, business, any other career, uh, where most of you are going to be from South Africa, some of you, some of you are going to be from Florida, and uh, if you have some experience in accounting, finance, got it? Those, those three things only. So I will start uh, for the names that I have here. I have first a uh, Coquetso. Um, hi, Prof. Hi, everyone. Um, so my background is in economics. I studied my undergrad and honors at the University of Johannesburg. And then I did my master's in economics at the University of the Witwatersrand at WITS. Um, it was a master's in economics as well. So I don't have much of a finance or accounting background. Perfect. Thank you, Kukenzo. No problem. You're going to learn a lot here. Um, then I have Amir. Amir, you're on. on hello, hello. Yeah, I'm here. Yes. My name is Amir, and I'm currently a pet student. I'm specializing in international banking and finance. That's why I'm taking this course to enhance my knowledge in money flows. Perfect. Thank you, Amir. Yeah, I, I know you. We, I took you last class. Uh, Connor? Hey, Dr. Nifo. Um, no, so, no, yeah, no. I'm a student at Fordham. I'm working on my master's degree in economics. Um, so yeah, and I, my experience in finance and, and accounting is just like undergraduate business level classes, but that's pretty much it. Perfect. Thank you, Connor. Uh, we have Dineo. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you, Dineo. How are you doing? Good afternoon. 
Hi, good evening. Um, I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? Very good, thank you. Um, so yeah, I am based in Johannesburg. My academic background, I did investment management at the University of Pretoria, and then did a honors in treasury management at the University of Johannesburg. And then currently I work as an analyst for a mezzanine fund, um, yeah. Oh, perfect. So you 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 are aware of all these numbers. This is good. So hopefully you want to learn something, and perhaps we're going to learn a lot from you. Thank you, Dina. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Kutso. Oh no, sorry, sorry. Before Julius. Uh, Julius Payne. Hello. Um. So I, I'm Julius. I did my. <laughs> yeah, we have we have a power outage, so um, the, in, the the connection may be a bit spotty. Um, so I did my. I have a bachelor's degree in investment management um, at the University of the Northwest in South Africa. I'm also from South Africa, and, I, and I'm stationed here. I have a master's degree in economics at the University of Pretoria. Um, I have a bit of accounting experience and business management experience you in from my undergraduate um that's it thank you thank you thank you Julius and now we have a good song uh, evening or afternoon everyone um I have background in accounting and finance and I did my undergrad and postgrad in accounting oh great okay perfect Just give me one second. Thank you, Kutso. Um, Koketso? Oh, yeah, no, sorry, you you, are, you have done already. Lindiwe? Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Lindiwe Ngomwane, mm. also from South Africa. Um, academic background. I did my undergrad and honors in economics at the University of Pretoria, and I did my master's in public finance at the University of London. Um, I have a bit of background in accounting from my undergrad um, studies, and then a little bit of project finance and appraisals from my master's degree. Thank Excellent. you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mihubo, Mafuna, yeah. Hi, Prof. How are you? Uh, my name is Mihubo. <laughs> yeah, I'm a student here at Fordham University. Uh, I don't have much background in accounting, but yeah, very basic knowledge of accounting. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Excellent. So let me see. Uh, Mulalo. Mulalo, sorry if I'm pronouncing this wrong. Sorry, I had <laughs> muted myself. Um, hi everyone. Um, I did my undergrad and honors in economics and econometrics at the University of Johannesburg. Um, I don't have much background in finance and accounting other than what I did in undergrad. Perfect. Thank you, Mulalo. Excellent. Um, Nick? Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Nick Labiento. Um, I'm currently a grad student at Fordham studying my master's in economics. And uh, I don't have much knowledge in accounting and finance, but uh, you know, I had a few classes in undergraduate. And then also, I just recently took international finance, but that's about it. Perfect. Thank you, Nick. Thank you and welcome. Uh, Rachel? Hello, everyone. Um, I did my undergrad in investment management at the University of Pretoria, 
and I'm now doing my honours in economics. So I do have a bit of accounting and finance background. Perfect, perfect. Thank you, Rachel. Then I have Silvia. Hi everyone, my name is Sia Vanzana. I did my undergrad in Northwest. I was doing economic sciences with international trade. And I'm currently doing my honors in at University of Pretoria in Ecos. Economy, yep. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so you're a CEO, yes. Oh, so I have a, now comes a CEO, CEO Mantanda. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Yam Tanda, and I did my undergrad at the University of Forte, and I did a Bachelor of Commerce. Um, I'm, cur I'm currently doing my honors in economics slash econometrics. Um, the only background I have of accounting and finance is the modules I did in my undergrad. Excellent. Okay, thank you very much. And then we have, uh, da, 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 who have this? Yeah. Sidiso? Sidiso? Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Sidiso. I did my undergrad in econometrics at the University of Pretoria, and I'm currently doing my honors. So the only background on I have in accounting is first year two semesters of accounting, um, and that's about it. Perfect, thank you, this is okay. Thank you. Then we have a Tumi. Hi everyone, my name is Kiti Metzi, um, and I am currently studying my honors at the University of Pretoria in Economics, and I did my undergrad also at UP in Economics, and I did accounting in my first year. That's okay. my background. Yep, thank you. Thank you. And Jonke? Hi, everyone. Um, I did my undergrad and honors degrees in um, accounting at Stellenbosch University. So I have some accounting experience and I'm currently a creative analyst. Perfect. Excellent. Okay, excellent. I think we have we have everyone here at the list. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, uh, let me. You don't have any questions about the syllabus? Any any questions before we start? No. Okay, so let me. Sorry, sir. I wanted yes. to ask to have a prescribed textbook. Um, no, I just I wanted to ask reading material yes. like um. Yes. Okay. So I don't know if you heard me, Prof. It's Koketsu. Koketsu, yes, Koketsu. Please tell me. So I didn't hear you very well. Can you repeat, please? I was, I was asking if we're going to have any, um, like reading materials, like articles and stuff for the course, or we, no. it's going to be the lecture that you give. It's going to be the lectures, and I will give you exercises. A lot of exercises. Where, uh, oh. normally we try to solve all the exercises in class. Because the idea here is to have all the all exercise that the correct answer of the of the exercises. So you see that. So if you really redo the exercises and you get the exact value, so you're going to be more ready for the quizzes or for the exams. Okay? The class is a. Um, let, let me tell you that the class is more or less. Um, I would say um, intermediate, and then we finish with a kind of a high level class. Okay, but it builds up very quickly. So what I suggest you guys is to. Come to the class. If you don't come to the class, I'm recording. So you want to have the, the recordings to you. And just review the material we do in class, do the exercises we do in class. Uh, we try to solve as much as we can in class. So you have a lot to, to read and to review during your free time. Right? I'm, I'm pretty sure that if you just dedicate one or two hours after the class to study, you're going to be more than more than OK. The, the material is very intuitive, but it, it really sums up. Right? So you just need to be careful with the, with the volume of material we are going to cover. We cover a lot. Make sense? So there is no really, 
any any materials. You just can Google what we're doing is, is a kind of a straightforward, but uh, I will develop everything. I, I go from zero. And I take time. If you have questions, please don't, don't be shy. Just ask the questions. There is no stupid question. Just please go ahead and, and ask me questions. Go ahead. Someone else? Um, what is the exam structure? Yeah, the exam is a typical exam. It's a written exam. Uh, you have, it's only one page. The, the exam lasts more or less 45 minutes. Uh, it's very quick. You need to write very, very little. And, uh, and the thing is that what I want from you is why the time is very short, guys, because I want you to show me that you know, not only that you know, but you really know. So, and how do I test that is basically, if you know, you know, if I give you five hours, of course, you're going to solve all the exam. But the only way I can know that you really know the material is that is the speed. So you're going to have only 45 minutes to solve all the, all the exams. It's, it's very, the, the exams are short, but you need to know what you are, what you are doing. Okay, it's, it's regular, regular written exam. Okay. Other questions, guys, so we can start otherwise. Yeah, one more question, Professor. Uh, what, Please, how long did you say the, uh, the, the Zoom meetings are gonna be? Yeah, more or less, you know, sometimes we're gonna take more than two hours and a half, sometimes we're gonna have two hours and 15 minutes, something like that. Uh, it depends on how fast we move and how fast you help me solving the exercises, okay? Uh, perhaps the, the exercises in person are going to last more because I have the opportunity to see you, to interact with you. But these classes, the Zoom classes, as soon as I really don't see you a lot, um, unless you stop me, I, I just start working. Okay, and I expect you to help me, please. I need you to calculators or Excel if you want, because I need you to, to do a lot of computations, right? So it should be two hours, two hours, and no, no, not two hours, two hours, 15, two hours, 30, I think maximum. We don't have breaks. And of course, you are free to, to go to a restroom or whatever, but uh, try to be, try not to miss any of, of the class, okay? Make sense? Yes, thank you. Perfect. Okay, guys, so we can start then. So let me stop my video just to make the, the recording much efficient. So let me share. And then you're going to tell me, it's almost a year, guys, I have not used the, the Zoom. I was an expert on Zoom a, a year ago. Do you see my screen? White screen? Yes. Perfect. So let me see if I can write that. Yeah, I can write. Okay, guys. So this is going to be like a normal regular class. Okay. So I have the blackboard. I develop a whiteboard. I work in the whiteboard. I do exercises. I do everything in the whiteboard. In the whiteboard. So if you have questions, please just let me know. As soon as I don't have your pictures, guys, I don't see who's raising the hand. So just tell me, hey, professor, I have a question, please. If you can talk instead of just raising raising your hands. Got it. Make sense? I, I don't see anyone here. I'm just seeing my computer. Uh, and if you have questions, I'm going too fast. You need to, to let me know. So I can I can slow down and we can, I can do more exercises as you, as you want, as, as is needed, guys. Okay? So let me do a brief introduction of, of the class. And let me start basically saying, what, what do you think we're going to be doing? Is uh, Let's start talking about, you know, what is the, 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 the structure of a corporation? Okay, and, and then from there, we are gonna start developing a lot of things. So in terms of the, of the corporation guys, we always have you know, the board of directors, or also known the board. The, these guys basically represent the ownership, right? So they represent the owners. Okay? Each vote has a, a each a share has a voting right, etc. Now from the board below this guy, we have the, the, the boss of the corporation, the chief executive officer, the CEO. And in general, sometimes depending on the corporation, guys, we have the chief operating officer. And you know, sometimes the chief operating officer is the boss of the CFO, and sometimes the CEO is the direct boss of the CFO. So let's put this uh, at the same level, okay? Now, more and more, if you go to the industry, guys, so I mean, uh, not finance, in, in finance is more or less this, this way. You have the CEO, you have a CEO, and you have the CFO at the same level. If you go to manufacturing, for example, normally the CFO depends on the CEO. Okay? But let's focus on the, the CFO for a minute. 
So what is the CFO, guys, or what who he controls or who's the boss of, of who? Uh, basically, we have two pieces here. We have treasurer. And then we have the other guy that is the controller. And the treasury guys is basically cash, do you agree? So this guy can have cash management. They have credit management. And also these guys are in charge of capital expenditure guys. and financial planning. So this, the treasury is the one that does that. Got it? And now who's the controller, guys? Well, the controller has, is a, has a very important role also. One of them, of course, is taxes. You know, the other thing is that control the cost of the structure of the corporation. But also they have something related to, to research is financial Accounting, we're gonna do something about financial accounting in this class. And he also has information systems. Okay, so as, as you can see guys, the corporation is made of cash, so they need to manage cash. You know, they see the long and short term analysis. They need to be sure that the, that the money comes into the, into the business, either by investments, by loans, over operations, and what they try to do is try to create value for a corporation. Okay, the controller has a very important role in terms of tax, uh, taxes and costs. So they need to know how much you need to know how much the cost of your products are in order to price this correctly. You need to communicate appropriately, appropriately to the to the you know to the owners, to the lenders, etc. So that's why you need to have a very strong financial accounting. And how do you communicate now, guys, in information time? It's basically information systems. So you, you, how do you communicate your information? How do you manage your information? You use the cloud, you use Amazon Web Services. Do you still use Excel or do you use any Oracle type system or SaaS system? Got it? So this is basically the structure of, the, of, a, of a corporation. The class, guys, is going to focus on, on this individual, the role of this individual and how the, this individual needs to know something about cash management, taxes, costs, financial accounting, uh, financial planning, and capital expenditure. Okay? So as such, guys, the, the role of a CFO really, it, it, is, it is basically based on two things. is the long term. So he needs to be aware of what are the plans for the corporation for the long term. You know, So this is what is called capital expenditure planning. So I need to know what investments we're going to do you know, for the long term. We're going to build. We're going to do something, a new product. We're going to do investing in research and development, et cetera. And of course, the other important aspect of the of this CFO, guys, is a short term. Do you agree? It's basically cash. It's liquidity. Okay. Remember, the guys, that you can have a fantastic and most profitable corporation, but if you don't have cash, guys, you can collapse. Okay? And so the mixture between long term and short term is basically funding. So the CFO is always worried about funding. He's always worried about where do I get the money to fund the short term? Where do I get the money to fund the long-term perspectives of my, of my corporation? So that's the role of the, of the CFO. And the CFO is helped usually by these guys, the treasurer, the controller, and the accountant is normally below the, the controller. Make sense? Now, how this works, you know, one way of understanding the corporation, guys, is, have you heard about the, the balance statement? Have you heard about that? Yes. 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 Okay, so the, you know, I always start with the balance because it provides a picture of the corporation in a, in a very, very easy way. Well, if you divide the, the balance into, into two pieces, okay? So this part here is what is called my assets. And this one here is called my liabilities plus shareholders equity. Sorry, Professor. Um, are you still writing on the whiteboard? 
Yes, I'm writing. You don't see my whiteboard? Um, currently on my screen, I'm I'm still on that picture of the CEO, COO, and Oh, no, CFO. no, no. I'm, I'm moving more, guys. Can you, everyone is seeing what I'm writing here, the balance statement, what I put here, the balance sheet? Yes, yes, yes. yes. You know that perhaps what you are uh, happening is that you, you froze your computer. Can you take a look, please? Okay, I'll, I'll just log back into the session. Yes, please do that. And I will be aware that you're coming back. Okay, guys. So in, in the assets, we have two. We have a, a short-term assets. We're going to, to describe this in, in, in detail later, guys. Okay, this is more liquid. So we have cash, accounts payable, accounts uh, receivable, sorry, et cetera. And then we have the long-term assets. Okay, assets. Basically equipment, et cetera, buildings, land, whatever you can imagine. And in liabilities, of course, we have two pieces. One part of the question is liabilities. So we have short-term liabilities. And then we have long-term liabilities. And then we have the shareholder equity here. Okay, so we are gonna be discussing more in detail this part here, guys. But what is interesting for me at this point is that the, the assets produce value, okay? And all these liabilities and shareholders equity help the corporation to create value, got it? And that's all what you need. The other thing that I, I need to, you to understand, guys, is that the short-term liabilities, you pay them a price, do you agree? Because money has a price. If someone gives you a loan, what do you pay him? You pay you pay back the loan plus what? Interest. Exactly plus interest. Okay, and now what is the the what the the, the shareholders receive? It's also not interest. Do you agree? Because it's, they, they receive something over the money they have invested, but this is called what? Dividends. Dividends. Total. Okay, so remember, interest and dividends are the same, are technically the same. The names are different, but indeed also the dividends are a type of interest that is paid to the equity holders. Okay, and so where the, as I told you guys, this CFO is always looking for funding. So where the funding comes from? And here comes a definition of what is called a financial market. And you're gonna see how, how the financial markets work. So the financial markets guys have two, basically two pieces. One piece where the money is, where the investors are. And there are two types of investors. You have the lenders, okay? So let me, let me write lenders around here. And then you have the investors. Okay, the lenders can be short-term and long-term. And the investors are always long-term. Well, not always, but the, the investors are the ones that are really having equity. They are interested in, on, on equity, right? Now, this is the, the financial market. And what we have to the, to the left, guys, is my corporation. So what is my corporation? My corporation basically, guys, is based on assets. And what is the goal of assets? Create value, okay? So if I buy something, I buy, to, to do something more on that product and to sell it at, at a higher price, okay? So now, as I told you guys, the lenders receive interests and the equity guys receives uh, dividends, okay? So now, when the money flows from here to here, so the corporation uses its assets to create value and from this value, what do we need to do with the money that is on top of that? What do we do with the, with the money that we're creating? What do we do, guys? You reinvest, reinvest it. Yeah, this is one of the ways. You can reinvest. Correct? What else? Well, you need to pay to these guys. You also need to pay to these guys. Correct, guys? Mm -hmm. is, is that all? So we reinvest, we pay for loans, and we pay for equity as a corporation. What else? We're missing someone that is very important. We don't like it, but we need it. We need it. Taxes. We pay the owner. Exactly. We need to pay 
taxes. Did you see that? And so does the financial markets. And you, you, can you see, guys, more or less, the financial markets are related to the balance sheet? Where the money comes, the sources can be loans or can be investments. These monies are used into the assets, short-term or long-term, in order to create value. And from this value creation, what we need to do is we first need to pay the loans. So this is first, guys, in order of, of um, prelation. Uh, then you have taxes, okay, the wealth, and then you reinvest whatever you have, and the, the dividends are last term. So this is the last. In terms of risk, guys, what is riskier? Lenders, the loans are riskier, or the or investments in equity? Which one is riskier? Equity. Equity is riskier. Okay, why? If, if the corporation defaults, who receives first the money? Of what is left, of course. Lenders. Guys, if there is a bankruptcy, the first that receives the money, guys, are the lenders. Exactly that. And well, there is a, a relation. So this is employees, lenders, government. And then we have the last guys. The last guys who receive something is equity guys. Make sense? So as soon as this is more risky than, than this one here, which one should be larger, dividends or interest? Dividends. Dividends. Okay, so here comes the relationship that you always need to, to have in your, in, your, in your mind, guys. Risk and reward. So they have a positive relationship. The higher the risk, the higher the reward. Okay, so this must be always in your mind. Okay, I'm, I'm willing to take more risk, but you need to compensate me more, uh, compensate me better. Any questions up to now? It's clear? Okay, let's go into, into a different definition also, guys. We divide financial markets also. So this is the, the dynamics of financial markets. But in general, we also say that the financial markets are made of uh, two markets. Okay. We have something that is called the money markets. So these are short-term investments. And then we have capital markets. So these are basically long-term investments. Okay, and then what we have in, in the capital markets, guys, is something that we can divide this as many things as we want, but in general, we have primary markets. And then we have secondary markets. Okay, in primary markets, guys, is where the first time the, the stocks or the new loans or the bonds are issued. Okay, so in primary markets, we have private, you know, initial, uh, we have private offerings. And then we have what is called the IPOs, initial public offerings. Okay, initial public offerings. What is the difference between the private and the IPO guys? You know, the privates, basically they don't have regulation. So you can do the, the private offering to anyone. You can offer this to your mom, to your dad. You can offer to your friends, colleagues, to corporations, whatever. They, they are not regulated. Meanwhile, if you want to do an IPO, these are going to be extremely regulated. So normally you have another writer that SEC is looking for you. FINRA sometimes is looking for you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Make sense? So that's why some of the corporations, when they start, they start private. So there is less legal work to do. And once they start growing, growing, and growing, they need to, they, they see that they need to go IPO and they go and they do this route. And this route is much more expensive, but also, of course, you can you can raise much more money. Okay. This is normally what happened with Amazon, you know, Tesla, Facebook, all these guys started private. They grew at a given point and then they go public for much, much more money. Make sense? So primary is the first issuance, guys, and secondary is basically when the people that have bought uh, either debt or equity here, 
they need liquidity so they can go to secondary market and they basically trade it. Okay, so basically here we have the exchanges. Later, we will understand what is the relationship of the exchanges and the corporation. But basically everything that happens in the exchanges, guys, do not affect directly the corporations. Do you agree with me? So if I buy and sell Amazon shares, the corporation Amazon is not suffering. It's not, they don't, they don't, they don't collect, they don't account for anything. This is a private, uh, a private trade, a, a private transaction. Make sense? Now, how this affects, we're going to see that uh, later. Of course, it has an, an effect, but it's not a direct effect. Any questions, guys? No, sir. Excellent. So let me save this one here, and then we continue. Let me see in one second what I am doing. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so let's do. I think I, yeah, that's what I'm telling you. I need to see where is my. Okay, let me stop share. And I will share this again. Okay, guys, so what we are going to be focusing uh, in during this, the first two or three classes is in understanding, first of all, how interests work. Okay, remember that dividends are also interests. So I will use the general term interests just to, to basically describe the value of money. Okay, and so let's start with a very simple question. And, and you tell me, you try to answer this question. What's finance? Any ideas? Someone can describe what is finance, guys. In your own words, just let me tell me whatever comes to your mind. Money. Yep. Managing money. money. Yep. That, who, who said something more? Uh, Nick, managing money. Yeah, managing, management. So understanding money, right? What else? I'm cheating a little bit because you've said this in one of your lectures before, but no managing money and analyze, analyzing money over time is the key thing. Yes. So basically, guys, time. You know that the clue is not the money. <laughs> Seriously, what the clue is for finance, guys, and what makes finance much more compelling and, and, and difficult, compelling and difficult is, is time. What happens with time, guys? Imagine that we don't have time. So the money, yeah, the money is going to be a fixed number, do you agree? What makes the money change in value is time. And why the, the why in time we have a change in value? Why? If I have, imagine guys, I tell you the following example. You have one dollar today, okay? And I offer you in one year, I will give you $1.1, okay? Assume that I will not default. I assume that I'm a, a correct person. I will not disappear with your money. You give me $1 today and I will give you for sure in a, in a year, $1.1. How do you think about this business? Is it a good business or not? It depends on the inflation rate. Yes. So the issue here, guys, is that these numbers here are called nominal numbers. What we need to start talking is always, we need to always think about real terms. So real terms implies that we need to consider the value of money in time. Okay, so value of money in time. 
you know, uh, the world, guys, is in a heavily inflationary process during 2022 and part of 2023, right? The inflation is going very high in USA. USA, we are 8.99% uh, annualized in inflation. So this has, hasn't been seen since the 70s, you see? So, so why understanding the time of value is crucial, guys? Okay, the time of value in general, guys, is measured by pi, and pi, for me, is going to be inflation. Okay. So why time of value, time of money is crucial, guys? Because what you need to understand is that I can have one and 1.5. So you see that indeed the increase is 10%, right? So that's what I'm offering you. I'm offering you 10% in a year. The issue is that we need to be sure that with this money here, at least we are able to buy what we are able to buy here. So that's why instead of using nominal terms, so these are nominal terms, what we try to do is we try to write them in real terms. So what I will do, for example, let's assume that with $1, I can buy one kilo of sugar. Okay, imagine. Now the question is, if with this 1.1 in the future, I can do three things. I can buy one kilo of sugar, so I'm indifferent. You agree? I can buy more than one kilo of sugar with uh, the 1.1. So basically I'm better, or I can buy less than one kilo of sugar. In this case, I'm, I'm wor worst, do you see? So if I just evaluate in terms of nominal numbers, I can be making 10%, but what is really important for you to understand guys is what can I do with this 1.1 in the future? I will buy, or more than one kilo of sugar, I will buy one kilo of sugar, or I will buy less than one kilo of sugar. And based on this, I need to, to decide. But you know, see, you see the complexity now, guys? It's not as easy as simply say, you know what, 1.1 and 1 is 10%. The complexity is this number here. Is I need to understand what inflation is, how inflation works, how can I forecast inflation? So this is a very complex process. It is not a single easy process in just say, oh, you know what, time is important, but that's it. No, time is very important because we have different variables, inflation, exchange rates, you know, wars, you know, crisis, financial crisis like that, 2008, 2009, or the financial crisis that we have seen during 2021, 2022. You see that, guys? So that's why time makes so beautiful uh, the study of, of finance, because it implies that in time, I will not simply face a single possible scenario. I can I can see many different possible scenarios based on probability distributions. I can try to understand what's going to, what's going to be happening in the future. But in real life, guys, what can happen in the future depends on so many different things that we need to basically use a lot of statistics. And then you we pray, and that's what we do. Make sense to you guys? So the first thing that you need to remember, what is finance? It's simply the management of money in time. That's it. So these three variables are the definition of finance. And then from here, we're going to have pricing, portfolio, options. We're going to have a lot of theory, a lot of models, et cetera. But indeed, what we are trying to do is simply trying to manage money in time. That's all. Make sense to everyone? Yeah. OK, so the second thing that you must remember, guys, is something that in, in accounting we don't consider. OK, it's something that is called the equation of equivalence. So what is this one? What, what is the meaning of that? Well, mathematically, is a, is, a, is a following, guys. The present value, PV is present value, of cash flow one, if, sorry, this is, if the present value of cash flow one equals to the present value of cash flow two, we can say that F1 is a cash flow one is equivalent to cash flow two. Okay, so this implies, guys, in words, if I have money today, money at time zero, and I have money at time t, got it? I cannot do anything with, this, the, with these amounts. I cannot sum these amounts. I cannot subtract. I cannot divide. I cannot do anything. What I need to do is two things. Either I move the time from the future to the present. This is called discounting. 
or I need to move the money from the present to the future. How do we call this process? Compounding. Okay. So if I want to do any mathematical operation, what I need to do is I either compound, so I move the present monies to the future, or I discount, move all the future values to the present. And then one, once I have them in the same period of time, then I can do whatever I want. I can sum, divide, multiply, whatever you can imagine mathematically. Got it? So this is what is the question of equivalence and why this is different from accounting. Because in accounting, guys, imagine if I spend some, some money today for producing something, so it's money today, then I sell these products in one month and I receive the payment in two months. Yeah, okay. So imagine that today my cost was 100 and in two months I sell this product at 200. So accounting, what is the, the profit? It's going to be 200 minus 100. Do you agree? Accounting wise, guys, they don't, we don't respect this de definition of a equation of equivalence. So in accounting terms, the 200 in two months are exactly the same as 100 today. For accounting purposes, that's correct. For financing, for finance purposes, guys, guys, this is terrible. We are not never going to do that. We never mix monies in different periods of time for different reasons that I will explain during the class. Got it? Okay. So how do we then, how do we easily see this equation, equation of equivalence? How do we understand finance in a very basic way? Well, we are going to rely, guys, on something that is called the cash flow. And we're going to be using cash flows all the time. You're going to see how beautiful cash flows are once you understand them. Well, there are two types of cash flow. Well, first of all, a cash flow looks like this. Can be like that, can be like that, or can be here or here, and you know, any combinations of them. So a cash flow has always four elements, guys. You know, outputs, money getting out. So when the, the arrow is down, implies that you're investing, you are lending, okay? money gets out, you always have inputs, money getting in, like here, this is input, and this is an output. Also, we have the time dimension. What is the missing piece of the equation, guys? What is missing? There is one, I told you, there are four elements. What is the fourth element? What is the fourth element, guys? Someone. What is missing? I have mon money out, money in, I have the time. So what is missing to understand it finance? Yes, go ahead. Is it inflation or the percentages of the interest or something yes. that you will discount or compound with? Interest rates, completely right. Okay, that's it. So we have money in, money out, the time and interest rates. And what is the interest rate, guys? Is the rate that makes two that makes the inputs and outputs equivalent? Because remember, I cannot I cannot sum the inputs and outputs. I cannot subtract one from the other one. The only way I can do that is if if I move this to the present or I move this to the future. Now, how do I move it? I move it using interest rates. So what is the interest rate, guys? It's simply the, the, the percentage that makes two cash flows equivalent. Okay, that's all. Now, this one here, when you invest first and then you receive money later, is called an investment cash flow. And when you receive money first, and then you need to pay, this is called a financing cash flow. Right? Investment, you put first money, you invest, and then you expect to receive money in the future. And when you finance, imagine a mortgage or you finance a machinery, et cetera, you receive money first from the bank, and then you expect to pay this in the future. Right? And these are the, the, the cash flows that we're gonna be using. And you're gonna see how, how easy this works. Now let's go, let's go a little to understand what is the difference between interest and interest rates. 
So our interest, I will call this caps I versus interest rate. I will call this small i. Okay, so imagine guys that I have <clears throat> that I have hundred dollars here. I, I get a loan for hundred dollars for one period, and I will pay hundred ten one period. So what is the interest? So let's call this one here C zero, and let's call this one C one. My interest is going to be equal to C one minus C zero, correct? So my interest is going to be hundred ten minus hundred. So my interest equals 10. Everyone agrees with that. Now, what is the interest rate? My interest rate is simply my interest divided by my C0. So, or basically C1 minus C0 over C0 is the same. So this is going to be in this case, 10 divided by hundred. So my interest rate equals 10%, okay? So the interest rate is a relative term, it's relative to the initial investment. And the interest is an absolute term, is simply how much money you are paying in, in absolute numbers. Got it? Now, what we're going to do in, in what follows in the class, guys, we're going to talk about interest rates and what type of interest rates we have, how we can do tricks with interest rates, how the people can trick us with using different interest rates, etc. cetera. Got it? So let's focus now and then the, the remaining part of the class is going to be just talking about interest rates. Questions up to now, guys. Questions? Nope, all good. No questions, perfect. So let's go. I don't know if I have said it. I assume I have said it. Yeah. So now let's talk a lot. Let's talk a little about interests, interest rates. Okay. Let's do first of all something that is called a simple. There are two interest rates, guys. One that is a simple interest rate. I will call it. I with a small s below. And we have the compounding interest rate. That I will call it simple I. Okay. So what is the difference between both of them? The simple interest rate, guys, it doesn't consider interest on interest. So always the interests are computed on the principal, on the original principal. Well, of course, compounded interest rate computes interest on interests. Okay. What are the mathematics we're gonna be using here, guys? We're going to be using multiplications or divisions. What mathematics we use here? Well, we can use logs or exponents. Okay. But you're going to see it's, it's very, very simple. So let's, let's focus our efforts for a minute in simple interest rates. Okay, remember, I will call this the I with a small s below. Okay, so let's first understand how this works. Okay. Let's assume, guys, that I have the following. I have C0 money today, and I will simply compute some time, sometimes money. So what money, what I, how do I compute here my, my, my interest? My interest at period one is going to be equal to what? Imagine that the, the, the interest rate per period is IS. So it's, it's constant. Guys, this is a number, 1%, 2%, whatever. So it's going to be simply my initial capital times IS, correct? Make sense? Yes. Yes. And so what is the interest for period two? As soon as we're in a simple interest rate, guys, 
this number here never changes. So this number here is going to be C0 IS. If you go the interest rate at time, sorry, the interest at time three is going to be the same, C0 IS, et cetera. And if you go to the period N, uh, is going, the interest is going to be simply C0, C0 IS, okay? So CN is going to be equal to what? So my future value is going to be equal to what? Well, your future value is going to be equal to the initial money, this, this money here, plus all the interest rates, C0 IS plus C0 IS plus C0 IS, correct? So this is going to be my I1, this is going to be my I2, and this is going to be my IN. You see, common factor is C0. So my CN, guys, is going to be simply C0, one plus IS plus IS plus how many IS? How many times this one here? If yeah. I have N periods, N, N. N periods, exactly. So CN is going to be simply C0, C0, one plus N times IS. And this is going to be your, your formula for the simple interest rate. Okay, that the most simple case. I will do one example and then we complicate our lives in, in a minute. Make sense to you? So this is the way, guys, the simple interest rate is computed. It's simply you have your initial value, one plus n times the interest rate for a period. And that's all. So let's do one example. Let's assume that I have $1,000. And let's assume that I have one, two, three, four, five, six periods. And I want you to, to tell me what is my cash flow times six. If my simple interest rate equals 1% per period. OK, you tell me. You help me with the calculators. This is an easy example, right, guys? So my C6 is going to be simply C0, 1,000. That multiplies 1 plus n is equal to 1. How many times I need to repeat this one here? Six. Six, six times. Six times 0 0.01. Mm -hmm. Correct? So this is 6%. Uh, so this is going to be 1,060. Agree with me? Okay, yes. and so this is your answer. So if you have $1,000 today and you deposit your $1,000 at a simple interest rate that is equal to 1% per period, after six periods or six months, if you, if you imagine, you're gonna get $1,060. All right, so take this as, as a saving account at a simple interest rate. Okay, so now let's complicate our, our lives a little. Because you know, sometimes uh, the interest rates are not fixed. The interest rate can be changing. Okay, so in general, in general, okay. So what happens? Imagine if we have the following, and we'll do the exact number, the exact example here. But here, my simple interest rate is going to be one percent. 1%, then it changes to 2%, then it changes to 3% for the remaining of the, of the periods. How do we compute now my C6? How do I compute that? Remember, we always start with my C0. I put one plus because I want to see what is a complete, the total amount of money, one plus. 
And then what I do is, okay, how many times one person repeats? Twice. You do two, yeah. Two times 0 0.01, do you agree? Because it repeats two times. How many times a two person repeats? Once. One. One times 0 0.02. And how many times three person repeats? Three times, three right? Times. One, two, three. <clears throat> times 0 0.03. And then what do you get here? So we have two plus two is four plus six is, is 10. Do you agree? So we have 1.8. This is 10%. Or not? No, it's more. So this is 12, 14, no, no, 11, 12, 13, 13%. Agree with me or not, guys? Agree. So basically, what we are saying is that this is going to be this money here. Do you have questions? Guys, do you have questions? No. Okay. No questions. It's a degree or not? Sorry, I, I don't hear you very well. Your, your voice is cutting. So for example, here is 0 0.02. Is it two before this? Is it degree or multiplier? These two? These two? Yeah. Yeah, it's a multiplier. It's two times, so it's a multiplier. Two multiplied by 0 0.02. One multiplied by 0 0.02. Three multiplied by 0 0.03. Because you, you count. I have one, two times 0 0.01. I have one time 0 0.02. And I have one, two, three times 0 0.03. This multiplies. Hopefully I've done the, the multiplication correct. So we have three, six, nine, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, should be 13%. Okay, perfect. So now in general, guys, my formula, Cn is going to be equal to C0, one plus, I will say N1, simple interest rate one, plus N2, simple interest rate two, plus, you know, you can have as many simple interest rates, let's say NK, simple interest rate k. So in this case, for example, n1 was two, n2 was one, and k was three. And my, my simple interest rates are 1%, 2%, and 3%. So this is, in general, guys, this is that the way we compute that. But we don't need to memorize the formula. I simply know that the logic, okay? We, do, we are going to do a couple of exercises now. Questions? Copy, if you-, if you uh, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Just um, asking in terms of the formula, would you expect to see on paper it being written out the way you did? No. Or uh, no. if the I logic is you, fine? No, no, no. I expect you to do this. Or to do this. Okay. That's what I expect. From so me. as long as it leads to the right answer. Yeah. Yeah. But you know that the only way you want to arrive to the right answer is technically using the formulas, but you, you don't necessarily to you don't necessarily need to write a formula, but that's what you're doing. In, you know, internally okay. that's what you're doing. Makes sense, but no, I don't I don't request formulas. Give me the formula, no. I do a lot okay. of formulas to give you the intuition because you need to have the intuition, but you don't need yeah. to memorize the formulas, okay? Okay. Okay, so let me save and let's do exercises now. Okay, guys, you you do please do an exercise number one, okay? So again, you have imagine five thousand dollars. Have one, two, three, four, five. So I want to find C five. Imagine that this is one percent, one percent, two percent, three percent, and one percent. So I want to find C five. Okay. Now let's do five thousand here again. Please, you can start working, guys. Huh? So you have six months, seven months. But here, what I will do is I will add 2,000 more. 
And let's assume that this is 1%, 1%, 1% all the time. Much easier. Okay, let's do this very quickly. We do, yeah, that's a problem here is that I don't have a lot of space. But let's, let's, go, let's do this too. So let's say three minutes to do this too, guys. And that'd be one minute to bring some water. Okay, guys, I'm here. Two more minutes and then we start sorting. Guys, there is only one way of learning this stuff is by doing, okay? So there is no magic here. You need to do it and do it while I'm here so you can ask questions.
Ready? So the first one should be easy, right? C5 should be equal to what? $5,000. So multiplies one plus, okay. How many 1%? Remember here, the order doesn't matter, right? I have three times 1% plus one time 2% plus one time 3%. Of course, you don't need to write the, the, the one, but just write it for you. So C5 equals what then? Someone? 5,400. 5,400. Someone to confirm? Yes. Yes. Confirm. Perfect. Great. Okay. Okay. So now let's do the second one. Guys, you need to find a way of doing this smoothly and slowly, okay? And the best way for you should be, okay, you know what? What I will do is I will treat this one as, a, as two different cash flows. One that goes from here to C7, and these two that goes from period number one, two, three, from period three to period seven, okay? So I will do that. If I move this into the future, we have done that already. This is going to be equal to $5,000. How many times 1%? Oh, it's easy. It's one plus uh, seven times 1%. So this is this value here. And if I move my, my 2000 to the future, it's going to be 2000 to multiply 1.01. 1 .01. Uh, sorry. 1 .2 too fast here. The multiplies uh, one plus one, two, three, four times. 0 0.01, correct? Make sense? Mm -hmm. So what do we get here? This is 4%, this 2080. is 2080. Perfect, and this one? 5,350. Excellent, and then if we sum, we obtain this number here. Agree? Yes. Okay, perfect. So there is another way of doing this stuff that you need to be very careful, okay? Because remember, in the simple interest rate, so I need to be sure this is simple, okay? Just to remember, we are talking about simple interest rates. In the simple interest rate, guys, the principal is not added to the, sorry, the interest is not added to compute the new interest, okay? So what you can do also is another option. Let's do this in, in red. Another option is to move the $5,000 into here, okay? So what is the interest that I compute from here to here from 5,000 is going to be 5,000. Uh, sorry, only the interest. It's going to be 5,000 times one, two, three, three times 0 0.01. Agree with me? So this is my interest up to period three. So I obtain, uh, if I, this interest is going to be what, 150? Agree with me or not, guys? Yes, yes. Okay, so this is only interest. Okay, so now I need to compute the interest for, for this part here. So the interest is going to be equal to what? Now, how much money do I have? I have 7,000, correct? 7,000. Yes. yes. One, no, it's not one plus. It's uh, multiplied by how many? 1%, four times? 1%. Oh. So my interest for this period equals what? 280, I think. 480. Should be, yeah, 280 is. 280. Okay, so in terms of interest, how much interest do I have? Total interest. Is going to be the 150 plus the 280, correct? So this is equal to 430. And then I need to add the principal. What is my principal that I have accumulated? 7,000. So how much money do I have in total at the end of the day? Exactly the same amount of this one here. Okay, so if you want to do that, you just be careful. What you do is you only compute the interest. You add the principal and you forget about this interest because this interest cannot be added to the 7,000. This is going to be the next method. And then you compute the interest for a second period, you add the interest and then you add the principal and then you get the same, same amount of money. 
Now, I prefer guys this one here. They don't get confused. Just use this method here. Just move every cash flow to the future, and then you simply sum, and then you you get your result. No complications. Much simply, much simpler to understand. And for sure, you're not going to make mistakes. My students in the exams try to do this, and they get confused, and they mix up the interest. They sum to the principal, and they mess mess up with this formula. Okay. So my recommendation, guys, try to do this one here. This method. Questions? I think we're good. Excellent. I don't know if I'm saving you any. Yeah. So now let's do uh, let's do one more thing, and then I will I will do more. Do remember, guys. You, all this time I was telling to you periods, et cetera, one month, three months, one year, et cetera. But there is, we need to be able to do time transformations. So what I mean is, is the following. So let's do time transformations. So what is that time transformation is the following guys. It's simply, how do I transform, for example, one simple one year, Okay, imagine this is 12%. How do I know what is my simple for three months? Okay, the rule is very simple. The, the only thing you need to be very careful is about the dimension. So if I want months, I need to be sure that I do this by months. 12% corresponds to 12 months, correct? So three months should be times three. You agree? So 12% corresponds to 12 months. I'm looking for three months, so I simply multiply by three. So this is going to be equal to 3%. So what is the simple for one month? What is the simple for 30 days? And I, 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 need, you, I need to give you some conventions. Okay, some conventions, guys, that we're going to be using all the time. One month equals 30 days. A one year equals 360 days. Okay, so these are the, going to be the conventions we're going to be using during the full class, guys. Okay, can you please find this one here? And what is the simple for two years? Can you try to find that? Okay, this is this is simple. So what we do is, if twelve percent, I, I want monthly. So is for twelve months. For one month should be equal to one percent. Correct, guys. Do you agree with me? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, perfect. So I need now now days. So what I need to do is I need to transform this one here into a daily basis. So if twelve percent is one year, right? So one year is three hundred sixty days. How much is 30. Well, of course, this is going to give you, this is the same question here, right? 30 days. This is going to be also 1%. So let, let me do, let me do, yeah, this is two years. How do we do the two, the two years, guys? If 12% is for one year, how much is for two years? 24%. Now, imagine let's do 15 days. So we say if 12%, simple, if 12% 
is for 360 days. What is for 15 days? So this is going to be basically 0.5%. And so on. Make sense to everyone? It's very simple mm -hmm. to transform. It's very, very simple. That's why the simple interest rate, guys, is called simple because it's really very intuitive. But I, I will show you later how, how the tricks can work here for you or against you. It depends if you understand the, the, the concepts. Okay, so let's do one example. So let's assume the following, guys. Imagine I have, uh, I don't know, 5,000 again. I'm going to do a very, very long one. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, okay? So I'm going to be interested about C11. So let's assume that I do here $3,000. This is period three, four, five, and five. I do 7,000 more. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And then perhaps here I do another 2,000. That, what you know is that the interest rate from here to here, you have the, the annual interest rate. 12%. You know that the interest rate for here, from here to here, the interest four months equals 6%. And for all this period here, you know that the simple one month, all, all of them are simple, equals 1.5%. Okay? So you, you tell me, what is C11? Sorry, is the first three months or three years 12%? No, no, no. Uh, these are not years. These are, let's call these this ones here months. Okay. Um, I mean the interest rate from period zero up to period three. Um, yes. It's a, I give what, you what is the that, rate? Yeah, I give you that the, the annual interest rate is 12%. So what you need to do is you need to find what is the interest rate okay. for three months. Do you agree? Mm. Or you can use the, you can find the interest rate per month. And then, then we go to the previous example. That's easy. If you find that what is the interest rate per month, so you need to transform what is, if you have the annual interest rate, what is a one month? And then you do that as, as a previous example, guys. Okay, let's say three minutes to do that.
Okay. One more minute, guys. Please do it. Try to do it. Otherwise, you're not going to learn, guys. Okay, ready? So let's do the easy way, please. Let's do the easy way. Let's do the, okay, first of all, how do you compute this number here? What is the interest rate that is monthly? Someone, how do you find this number here? Divided by 12 months. Yeah, so you, what do you say is 12% is, is for 12 months, one month equals to 1%, right? So this is going to be 1%, 1%, and 1%. Everyone agrees with that? Mm. Okay, so let me find only for one, and this is going to repeat for several periods. How do I find this interest rate here? It's going to be 6% is for how many months? Four. Four. For one month equals what? Do you agree? So six divided four is what? 1.5, 125? 1.5, right? 1 1.5. Yeah, 1.5%. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So this is going to be 1.5%, 1.5%, 1.5%, 1.5%, 1.5%, 1.5%, 1.5%, 1.5%, 1.5%, 1.5%, 1.5%, 1.5%, 1.5%, 1.5%, 1.5%, 1.5%, 1.5%
The bottom one is 5750. Okay. This is 3%, 36. This, this should be 2060. Guys, I need you your help. Which one? 3360. The 3000. Yeah, 3360. Three, three, six, zero. Six, zero. Okay. And this one, I, I think I have 7630. Yeah, that's correct. Perfect. Okay, so we just sum plus 2060 plus 3360 plus 5750. I have. I got 18,800. Someone to confirm? Yes, sir. Excellent. Excellent. Questions, guys? I don't think there's any. Excellent. Okay, guys. So let's go now into, into something that is, uh, we apply more the, the compound interest rate. We always actually use the compound, but I will show you how the people used to have, no, they, they still use interest, simple interest rate for tricking you, okay? We're gonna learn that in the next classes. Okay, so now let's go to the second type of interest rates. So the second type of interest rates, guys, is compounding interest rate. Uh, Prof, can I interrupt you a little bit? Um, yes, go ahead. Un unrelated. I just want to ask, I saw we are going to have four of these uh, Zoom classes, but the days are not specified. I, know, I don't know if I missed Oh, it. no, no. The, so the same as the classes is going to be Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday. Oh, okay. Like a regular basis, days of classes, okay? So next class okay. is on Thursday, next Tuesday, next Thursday, and then we see here in USA. Okay. Okay, Thank you. excellent. Yeah, good question. Thank you. Okay, guys, let's go in company interest rate. Remember the trick for company interest rate that interest pay interest. Okay, so that's the clue that you need to understand. So let's do the generic case. Uh, you will see how, how this flows very easily. So imagine I have C0. Okay, so what is going to be the interest here at period one? My interest here is going to be what? is going to be C0 times my, oh, let's say interest, every period is interest. And I want to find Cn. So what is my, my interest here? It's going to be C0 times my interest of the period, correct? So what is my principal at the end of the day? My principal at the end of the day is going to be C0 plus C0 times I, because now I add up the, the interest to compute my new principal. So here, my, in, my principal is going to be C0, one plus I. Agree with me, guys? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so what is the interest for the second period? Well, my capital, my principal, times my, my interest. So it's going to be C0. This is the money that I have times this, times I. This is my interest, correct? The amount of money that I have multiplied by my interest rate. Okay, perfect. So how much money do I have at the end of this period? Well, I started with this money. So C0, one plus I, plus my interest, plus C0, one plus I times I, correct? Common factor C0 plus I, C0, one plus I, sorry, that multiplies one plus I. Agree? Common factor is this part here, C0, one plus I, one and I. So, but these two are equal. So basically this is going to be C0, one plus I to the power two. Now guys, if you continue doing this exercise up to period N, what do you think is going to be this one here? It's going to be C0, one plus I to the power what? And Take a look. Here, the power was one, when we were in period one, 
power two when we were in period two. And so the, the power is going to be the same as the number of, of periods. Agree? Yes. yes. Okay, so this one here, guys, is my CN. So my CN is going to be equal to my original value times one plus I to the power N. Okay, also the CN guys is called future value equals present value one plus I to the N. Or normally what we do, we use more present value. So the present value is going to be equal to future value one plus I over N. This equation here guys is crucial. This is a question of equivalence. Remember I was talking to you that the question of equivalence is this, this guy here. Okay, now what is I? So from here, guys, some names. I is the discount rate. The people call it discount rate. And one, one plus I is called the discount ratio. Okay, it's just names, guys. If someone tells you, hey, the discount rate is 5%, okay, you get it. This is the I that discounts is this I here. Okay, so let's do a couple of examples. Let's do the first example. So let's assume, guys, that you have the following. You have 1,000. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I want you to tell me what is C6. If my interest rate, my compound interest rate is 2% per period. Okay, let's do the, the, the first one, guys. The first one is a very simple application, right? So C6 is going to be simply $1,000, one plus 0 0.02 multiplied to, uh, sorry, to the power of six, correct, guys? Yes, correct. Perfect. What do you get here? One, one, two, six. One one point, two six point one, one six one six. Someone to confirm. That's correct. Excellent. Okay. So basically, if you 
save $1,000 today and you keep it your money for six months at 2% per period, you're going to get 1,126 in, in six months. That's the idea. Okay. So now what happens if I have change of interest rates? In this case, my C6 is going to be, remember, what you do is you move the monies per, per period. So this is going to be $1,000. If I move it up to here, I multiply one plus 0 0.02 to what power? Forget about the C6, just arrive to period two. What do you need to multiply? 1.02 what? How many times? Okay, with the power of what? Two. Two. Exactly. So this is your new principal, guys, at period two. Okay. So now I move it from here to, to here. So I multiply this by one plus 0 0.03. How many periods? Two. Also two, one and two. And then I move it, finally, everything to this period. So this now is my new principal. Then I move it times 1.01 .01 to the power also of two. Someone can give me the can give me the values, guys. Um, it equates to one one two five point nine four. One one two five nine four. Point nine four. Yep. So confirm. I got the same values. Excellent, thank you. So I need confirmation, guys, because I want the ones that are not doing this now, when they want to review your exercises, please, you have the exact numbers. So if you if you don't get these exact numbers, it's something wrong. Okay, questions. So we can do more exercises. Questions, guys. No? No questions? No. No questions. Perfect. OK, so let's do more exercises. OK, so let's assume, guys, that we have the following cash flow. So now I have 5,000. Imagine that here I have 2,000 and here I have 7,000. Assume that this is 1%, 1%, 2%, 3%, 3%, 3%. So this is compounded interest rate. So it just give me C6. What is the value of C6?
Okay, so they say five minutes, guys, to do this. And we this. Please remember to continue recording, okay? Or we will stop. Yeah, we didn't record uh, the previous examples, but yeah, guys, please, you need to, to remind me that. I always forget. So yeah, let's do time transformation, guys. Um, mm. Yeah, well, in any case, let's do time transformation. So what, what I mean by time transformation, guys, is imagine they have a, a compound interest rate for one year, what is a compound interest rate for one month, for example, or whatever. Okay, and in order to compute this one here, we, we're gonna do one very simple trick. I have CN here. So I know that how do you compute the interest rate? Let's call this interest rate number one. So from here to here, how do you compute this interest rate? Interest rate one equals what? How do you compute the interest rate? If you know that this is 110 and this is 100, how do you compute the interest rate, guys? For a full period. You never need to doubt about that, guys. The interest rate for a full period is always the future value, the last value, minus the first value divided by the first value, always. Okay, this is always true. Make sense? Okay, so you know that the interest rate one is equal to, to this formula. Now, if I call this one interest rate two, interest rate two, interest rate two, 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 and two. Tell me if this is true. Cn is going to be, I will use I2 now, is going to be equal to C0, one plus I2 to the power n. Agree with me or not? Agreed. Agreed. So let's call this one here one. Let's call this one here two, and let's do two and one. So basically I1 is going to be equal to Cn, that is this number, it's going to be C0, one plus I2 to the N minus C0 divided by C0. So from here, I1 equals, I, I cancel out all the C0s. It's going to be equal to one plus I2 to the power N minus N. Do you agree? So this is going to be your transformation formula, guys. The only trick, and I will not have time to explain to you, is what this N indeed is a ratio, okay? So this ratio is, periods of I2 of this guy divided by periods of I1. I always do this trick, guys, just to remember. This N has the periods of I2. Oh, sorry, I'm doing this wrong. This period of, of I2, this is two. And this is one. And this one here goes up, always. If you have mounts here, the periods go up. And if this is years, the, the years go down. I will do examples of this. So this is the only trick, okay? It's easy to understand with one example. Let's assume that I have, when I don't have S is compounded, for one year equals 10%. So what is going to be my interest for one month? Okay, so if I follow my, my definition is, I know that this one here is going to be 1.1 1. 1 to something minus one, do you agree? So what goes up? Remember, up goes this guy here. If this is one month, what I need to write, what is the period of this one here? Guys. It's 12 months. It's 12 months. It's one year. I cannot put one year because the, the units are not going to cancel. So this is going to be 12 months. So at the end of the, the, the day, your answer is going to be 1.1 to the power of one divided by 12 minus one. Can you find this value, please? This is a power, okay? It, it is not a multiplication. Anyway. This is a power. Can you find this one here? Can you find this one here? And you find this one here.
Okay, this is going to be 1.1 to the power of something minus one. 1.1 to the power of something minus one. And 1.1 to the power of something minus one. Okay, so what I put up here, what is this power, guys? That's 3 over 12. Exactly. 12 here. 15 over 360. Exactly. 15 over 360. So remember, one year is 360 by, by default, by convention. And this three years is going to be what? 3, three over, over one. 1. 3 over 1, exactly. And then can you please give me these exact values? Okay, I want to be sure that everyone has these exact values. What do we get here? 0 0.79. 0 point? 0.79. Is, is this correct? 0 0.79? So this is 0 0.79 percent already, right? Mm -hmm. Guys, do you agree? If this is 10%, yes. this is one mount, should be 0.79%, right? I need to confirm, guys. 1.1 1 .1 yes. to the power yes, of 1 divided by 12 minus 1. Yes, it's already this one here. OK, this one here is equal to what? 2.4. Percent, okay. Someone to confirm. Someone has 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 confirmed this one here, guys. Uh, the other thing is that we need to round. We we cannot cut. Okay. I am seeing here that there is a a small mistake, guys. Indeed, let me write this number as a number first, and then I will I will tell you how to do that. This is your point zero zero seven nine seven four. Okay. So if you round this number, we are going to use always two decimals. So this is going to, if you multiply this by 100, it's going to be 0 0.7. Well, 79, this is this goes to now. Indeed, this is going to be equal to 0 0.8, right? If I round to the second decimal. Okay. Make sense to you? Mm -hmm. So let me let me write this again. So this is equal to 0 0.7. 797 that is equal to approximated to 0 0.80%. Okay, we round. So that this 2.4 is exactly rounded, or what is a? Uh... Yeah, that one's right. Okay, That's okay. Good. sorry, this was good. So 2.4%. Okay, so this one here. Um, one moment. 0.397%. Yeah. Correct. So if we want to approximate to do to two decimals, we go to the same the same number, right? 0.4%. Yeah. Okay. Because this becomes 10 and this adds up to one. 0.4%. Great. Okay. So the last one. That does look right. Uh, thirty-three. Yeah. Yeah. Point. One. One percent. Yeah, that's correct. You remember, it's three years should be larger than ten percent. You agree? It makes sense. Perfect sense. Okay, guys. Questions. Do you understand? Sir, I, was, yes. I have a question. What is the yes. rounding convention for the exam? Yeah, it's always two decimals. Two decimals. In the, for the exam, it's always two decimals. Rounding to the second decimal, please. Got it? So like, like I did. So for example, this is three decimals. Really. I don't want three, I want two. 
So, but when you run this one here, this becomes 0 0.8. So I, 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 this is this is correct. But if you do this, come on, just one decimal, I'm, I'm okay. But in general, guys, let's do two decimals as convention for, for, for the example. Okay, questions? There's one, one final question, final example, guys, and I think we, we have covered a lot of material today. So let's assume, guys, you do this example. I don't know what example it is. Perhaps it's four, not sure. But imagine that you have the following. Okay, you have $7,000. You're gonna help me here. Then you have ten thousand dollars here. You have three thousand dollars here, and then you have five thousand dollars here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ten months. Ten months. So I want C10. Imagine guys that from here to here, the simple one year equals 8%. From here to here, no, not the simple, the compounding, the compounding six months equals 5%. And from here to here, the compounding a, let's say two months equals 1.5%. Okay, so tell me C10. You do the same trick, just transform into monthly, and then you, you are in the previous case. Very quickly, guys, let's say three minutes. Professor, uh, what does the middle interest say? What percent is that? Uh, 5%, uh, this 5%. one here. Okay. Yeah, six months, 5%. All right, thank you. This, oops, yeah, it doesn't look five, it's 5%. Just give me one second. I ask, oh, what happened here? Oh, 
before you stop sharing, one second, I need to provide a link. Here we go. Okay, so you tell me, guys. So, what is the the, the interest rate for a period? I will do the same, okay? So how do you compute this number here? It's going to be 1.08, correct? To the what minus one? What goes up? This is an annual interest rate. So I want to transform this into monthly interest rate. So this is going to be one over 12, correct? One month over 12 months, yeah. Yes, perfect. So what is this in, in percentage percentage wise? This is going to be point six four. Yep, point six four percent, zero point six four percent, zero point six four percent. So we have computed for these two. So now what is this value here? It's going to be one point zero five to the power of something minus one. So what goes up? Guys, this is a six month rate. One over six. One over six, exactly. And this equals what? 0 0.81. 0 0.81, okay. So this is going to be 0.81%. Someone to confirm? I have 0 0.82 guys. Sorry. Yes, by rounding. Do you agree? Okay. Because it's 0 0.0816, so 0 0.82. Mm. Just to, to follow our convention, guys. 82%, 0.82%, 0 0.82%. Great. So what is this last? Uh, oh yeah, this is the last one. This one here is going to be 1.015 to the power of something minus one. What power goes here? One over two. Exactly, one over two. Agree with me or not, guys? Yeah, yes, so it does. What do you get here? What do you get here, guys, two decimals? 0 0.75. 0 0.75%, exactly. 0 0.75%, 0 0.75%, 0.75%. And you are done. You agree? Then you have all the data, and then with the data, you can simply start competing. So let's do this together. And you just follow me, and then you help me to help me compete in the number. OK, I moved the 7,000 up to here. So this is going to be 7,000 multiply by 1.0064, right? To the power two times 1.0089, no, sorry, A2 to the power one. Agree with me, guys? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so this is my value, this, this 7,000 moved here. What I need to do in order to compute my, my new capital up to this period is sum the $10,000.
Now, once I have this capital here, I move all this money, all this money up to this period. So I simply multiply 1.0082 to the power one, two, three, right? So this is this money, all this money moved to up to $3,000. Then I sum that $3,000, and this is going to be the money that I have at the beginning of period uh, six. I'll multiply this by 1.0075 power two to move it up to here. Then I sum by $5,000. And then I multiply this by 1.0075 to the power two, and then you get it. Someone can help me, please. I got 26,272.79. Wait, wait, 26,000? Can you repeat that, please? Um, 272. Yeah. 0.79. 0.79. Okay, someone to confirm? I got 26,500. Wait, wait, you, you find, can you give me your number? 26,800. 800? Sure? Yeah. Okay, so I need to verify the numbers, guys. Can you help me verify the number? Yeah, I, I, I got slightly close to this number. I got 26, 200, 200 sorry. No. Uh oh, no, I get a different number. Can you check, guys? Because I what I'm getting. Yikes, I delete my calculator. Already. Yeah, I don't remember. So I think I got it something like 26. 721 something, I, I don't remember. Can you verify guys? We have three answers, that's not possible. No, yeah, I, I got the first the first question, the first answer. Someone can help me confirming this number. I need someone to confirm the numbers, guys. Yeah, I got the first number too. Yep, perfect. So here we go. Okay, guys, questions. So we can stop here for today and then we, we are gonna see you. We're going to see you again on, on Thursday at the same time, 4 p.m. Someone, questions, guys? Someone can, any doubts? No questions, no doubts? All good on my side. Excellent, guys. So see you on Thursday then. Please study. I will, this uh, recording goes to forum. Forum does that. The IT forum simply um, uh, upload this in, in YouTube. They're they're pretty efficient. So as soon as I have it, I will distribute this to all the list. Okay, guys. Have a good night. Thank you very much. Uh, our our friends from South Africa. What time is in South Africa now? Eleven thirty. Twelve thirty. 
Yeah. <laughs> sorry, guys. Sorry for that. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Have a good one. Thank, Thank you so much, Professor. Good night, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.